So our next section, we're going to talk about SEO. If you don't know what SEO means, you're in the right place. We'll, we'll define the term uh, and then talk to you about uh, how it works and why it drives your business results and ultimately how AI can help. Great. Okay. So um, I actually had to look this up, to be honest, but the fall of Rome was in 476 AD. Um, Google processes over 99,000 searches per second. So I just want to put that in perspective. That means if you used Google 10,000 times a day since the fall of Rome, you would still not have used Google as many times as we as the human race use Google every single day. So they are very, very good at processing this information. And more importantly, as a business owner, this is a market opportunity. People are using this all the time to do research for products and services, to compare reviews for products and services, to find local vendors. If it's not obvious, it's it, these, these search engines are extremely important and have a lot of people using them. And I just can't overstate how, how ubiquitous these tools are in our own research cycles. You're probably doing it on your phone every, you know, every hour of the day. Um, so just wanted to put that into context. Just to, to go back to these ideas of SERPs, the anatomy of a search engine results page. If you Google something on your desktop or if you do it on your phone, you're going to see a lot of ads, these sponsored listings. This is what we were talking about when we were referring to how they don't really have a monetization model for these new chat bots. Right now, the majority of Google's income comes from selling ads on these pages. Well, it turns out that searchers, people who use the search engines, tend to actually ignore paid ads 70 to 80% of the time. So when we're talking about SEO or search engine optimization, we're specifically talking about organic search. Those are the non-advertising components of a results page. And those results page can look very different depending on what you search. So on the left, we have a diabetes symptoms where there are some ads, but then there's more organic results. On the right, you have dog food where above the fold, it's all ads with the exception of a tiny little bit of real estate. So when we talk about SEO, which is the subject for today's lecture, we are primarily talking about organic search results. The advertising is an entirely different ecosystem. So how does a search engine work? If you can understand this even at a high level, then you can understand what's important for SEO. There's essentially, it comes down to three things. These robots need to crawl content, they need to index content, and they need to rank content. If you were building Google or you're building Bing, this is what you would have to be able to do as a company in order to build and host a search engine. So we'll go through each of these and why they're important. Um, so crawling content, you may have heard people refer to things like, uh, search engine spiders or robots. Essentially what both Microsoft and Google are doing is the first thing they have to do is discover your, your content for your website or your business. So they send out robots that crawl all of the links, the web, the web if you will. Uh, they crawl all the links between all this interconnected content and they discover your content. And so when we think about SEO, one important thing is that we make sure that it's easy for search engines to discover and crawl our content. And that's something that you'll, you'll see us talking about in our lectures. The second thing they have to do is they have to understand the content. So this is a process called indexing where Google or Microsoft gets the content. Okay, it knows it exists and it needs to understand it and start to build some associations in its database. Okay, what is this content about? What searches would be relevant if someone, if I wanted to show this content? Is, this, is there information on this page that I don't have? Is this unique? Is there information about specific people, places, entities, et cetera? And they go through an indexing process. This is where... AI starts becoming very important. You might have heard a few years ago uh, a ranking update for something called BERT, which was an early version of a transformer that Google was using to help understand content. And then the third and final- I just want to say, I really appreciate you highlighting some of BizHack's content and our ideal customer avatar, who is a little league. <laughs> that was my pleasure, yeah. Um, I love it. And then finally, they need to rank your content. So, so once they've crawled and discovered your content, then they have to understand your content. Finally, they have to rank it. And when we say rank it, what we mean, what we mean is they have to decide what's more important to the user. Is it your article? Is it your competitor's article? Is it a different website? And so they look at things like, is this content authoritative? Is it relevant? Is the source of the information trustworthy? 
And, and fundamentally, these search engines have to do all three of these things really well to give the user a good experience when they actually type something in. They need to have relevant content in their index, and they need to understand what's good content and what's bad content. And so when we think about search engine optimization as a business, our goal is to do really well at all three of those things with, with our website and with our content is make sure we're making it easy to be discovered, easy to be understood and indexed and optimized for those things. And then we want to look authoritative. So if if you think about the fundamentals of how you win at search engine optimization, it really just comes down to, to four basic things at a high level. Now, these are all very deep and technical, which Nicole and Wendy will probably take us down the rabbit hole of a few of these things. But first, you need to research and select keywords. So if you want to show up in Google, you need to be deliberate about what you're trying to show up for. And you don't want to show up for things that people aren't looking for. So that's the first stage. You've got to know what your keyword targets are. The and second can you remind folks what a keyword is? Absolutely. So a keyword is essentially a phrase that someone searches for. So it sounds like we're talking about a singular word like dog, but if someone was searching for dog food, that could be a target keyword that your business has, or it could be what we would refer to in the industry as a long tail keyword, which means a keyword with a lot of language and maybe not as much search traffic, but it's highly relevant for your business. Like for instance, if you're a leadership coach that specializes in pet store leadership, that is a very specific keyword of a very specific long tail query, but it's really, really relevant if that's what you're in the business of doing. And if you are, I, I'm, I'm actually slightly uh, surprised that's a very niche, uh, niche business, but an example. Um, the second thing you have to do is create great relevant content. Google wants to show good content to its user. If you want to show up for a certain keyword, you have to have content that Google and the user is going to think is relevant and good for that search query. So once you know what the words are, you have to prepare to produce content. And Wendy and Nicole are going to take us through how you think about both the research side and this content strategy piece. The third thing you need to do is optimize your content. This is probably the most simple line on this on this pyramid, but it's some of the most complex things to do. So there are technical things you can do to optimize your content. How fast does your content load? Does it have the right code in it? Does it have the right JavaScript and schema in the back end that feeds the robots information. But there's also editorial things you can do to optimize your content. Is it reinforcing the right language? Is it keeping the reader engaged and on the page? Is it driving up the click-through rates because it has very good descriptions and titles? There's all sorts of things you need to do to make your content not only be relevant, but rank well in the search engines and be good and engaging for users. And, and then finally, the last piece, which must have disappeared here on the top of our pyramid, but I'll speak to it, is you need to promote your content and build authority. So in order to rank, we don't only need to have good content that's aligned with our keywords and optimize it, but Google needs to view us as an authority. So there are some things you can do just with your own content to make sure it's an authority, like have original information or cite your sources or be clear that you're an expert in the domain, but promoting your content and building references to your content out on the internet can help reinforce that, that authority. So fundamentally, just zooming out, when you think about SEO at a high level for your business, the, the search engines are very competitive. And what you have to get right is you've got to select really good target keywords that are relevant to your business and have sizable traffic and people are actually searching for. Be prepared to create really great content, optimize that content, and then go promote that content to build your authority. So I, I think actually both Wendy and Nicole are experts here in a lot of that content strategy piece. And we'll take us through some examples of how you do that tactically. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. 